What is up boys, I'm The Average Man's Adventures and today I'm going to be showing you how to replace the stator slash alternator and rectifier regulator on a 2020 Royal Enfield Continental GT. This all started because my battery died on me several times while I was out on a ride. So I replaced the battery and it still didn't fix the issue. My next thought was replacing the alternator so I did some basic checks and didn't find anything wrong with it but I decided to replace it anyways. After replacing the alternator, I was still having issues, so I knew for a fact it was the rectifier regulator. Looking back, I shouldn't have jumped so hastily into replacing the alternator because it is such a tedious job, but I'm happy with the experience I got, and I definitely learned my lesson and can pass it on to y'all watching this video. So if you're having problems with your bike not charging the battery, it's probably the rectifier regulator, not the alternator. This video will have timestamps so you can skip the parts you don't need. Let's check it out. The first thing I wanted to check was the alternator fuse, so to get to that, I took the side panels and seat off. Unfortunately, the fuse was in perfect condition as you can see, so I had to continue troubleshooting. My next step was checking the alternator, so I removed the chain guard and disconnected the two alternator plugs. This is what the plugs look like. The male side is on the right and it is what is connected to the alternator, while the left hand side is what is connected to the rectifier regulator. Since I didn't see anything online about testing the alternator other than reading the voltage at the battery while it's running, I thought I'd try a different way to try and test it. Since I was alone and the bike has a kill switch in the kickstand, I figured I could try and get a reading directly from the alternator while it's running. The bike would not run with the alternator disconnected however, so I tried getting a reading with just the rotation from the starter. At this time I didn't know there was a rectifier regulator that wasn't part of the alternator assembly, so I figured it had to be the alternator that was broken. To get to the alternator you need to remove the crankcase cover. It's a little difficult to fully remove because of the strong magnet, but just give it a good tug and it'll come off.
While removing the stator, remember to take note of the orientation of the parts. Before installing your new stator, make sure that it is the exact same as the one you just took out. Once you're sure everything is oriented properly, torque it down to the correct spec. To ensure you won't have a leaky crankcase, make sure to scrape off the old gasket off of the crankcase cover. As you can probably see, the gasket had a tear in it, so I used liquid gasket to seal it. This isn't ideal, but the oil pressure won't be high enough to cause a leak, and I didn't want to wait for a new one to come in and possibly get torn again in shipping. I didn't record my final installation of the crankcase cover, so on your installation be more careful aligning the gasket and ensuring it is fit on there properly because you do not want to leak oil. Again, since this isn't my final installation of the crankcase cover, I didn't torque these bolts down. Make sure that you torque them down to spec.
Since I didn't want to wait for an OEM oil filter to ship from India, I found a forum online that said the Mobile One M1-104A works as a good replacement. For installation, make sure to prime your oil filter with a little bit of oil. I'm using Lucas Motorcycle Oil 10W50. You do not want to over tighten your oil filter so get it hand tight and then tighten it in an extra 3 fourths turn. Add oil and check the oil level until it falls in between the min and max lines as shown in the picture. Make sure to check this level while standing the bike upright. After replacing the alternator, my battery still failed to charge, so I focused my attention on the rectifier regulator. The rectifier regulator is located on the bottom of the bike and is not the easiest to reach. It's hard to show, but the connectors are held in place by a metal bracket. You need to disconnect them from this to be able to pull it out. Once you have the two wires unplugged and the connectors disconnected from the frame, make sure that the old rectifier regulator matches the new one before installing. Installing it is as easy as following the same steps but in reverse.
thanks for watching. If this helped you out, please like and subscribe. See you next time.